All right, so here we go. One of a not an ex internet exclusive, but very close to an internet exclusive. It's the review of the XKD power meter. Now we've got lots of different types. So we've got the the twin power. We've got the uh, the X power L. Um, I'll just put my little pointer on so that we can all see each other. Um, but yes, yeah, so they've got they've got a fair few um, different ones. Um, but the one we're going to review today is the X power S. So my friend Ted Cross, the absolute legend, um, he bought one. He's done loads of power testing, um, and we'll see what the results are. Because there's only one review, DC, uh, DC Rainmaker. I don't think it's done one, or maybe he has. But GB Llama, who's the ma big man on YouTube reviewing power, hasn't done one. So a bit of an exclusive. There is one lad who's done it. So anyway, here it is, um, the absolute beautiful thing. My mate wanted to put it on. It's a 60 tooth. He loves it. Um, but yeah, it's got rotor cranks and everything. But we'll get onto the details here. Um, so you can see it, it, you know, 4 volt, 110 B BCD. So here are the uh, the stats. So battery life, 150 hours, wireless, Bluetooth, so all the stuff you need. Accuracy, 1.5%. Got an app, collect by Bluetooth, 101 grams of the SRAM. Obviously, my mate has the Rotor 3D, 110 BCD uh, 4S. Um, so it's a ball spider ring. Uh, then it's waterproof battery weight uh, weight is sort of irrelevant as i said before we're not sure what, what it's going to be he didn't weigh it unfortunately but you know suffice to say it's going to be heavier than you know a one like a stages on a one single side but not as heavy as maybe an srm or something as similar um so what does it look like here's some lovely pictures um that you can see so you know just standard sort of spider ring uh, best choice for reliability and precision apparently so anyway what's in the box you get the box you get a charger you get a manual here's the manual um, love to see it and then here's the app so the app is pretty useful you can change the um the power setting so let's say you know you're you've done the power test and you're like actually it overreads by 20 watts you can do the offset here um, and there's lots of other information so it's a pretty it looks like a pretty decent app firmware updates etc etc power adjust you know some good things um that you can do uh and then the cost of it 300 dollars so it's not cheap um but it's not super super expensive compared to the other ones like i think their single sided is like 250 to 200 dollars depending on what crank and all the rest of it and then i think if you get them to install it's about 150 dollars and then the other one like if if you get the twin side it's a lot more expensive the twin side if you don't know already is incredibly inaccurate the right hand side drive of um right hand side like the drivetrain part of shimano cranks does not read power properly loads of videos about it i'll try and link one or two but have a look on the internet there's loads of stuff about it dc rainmaker shane miller everyone's done stuff on about it so don't trust those power meters for sure um here's the initial power test so obviously not too conclusive but i paid my five dollars and um got to use dc rainmakers so we'll um we'll hop over to that now Right, so here we are. This is the um, power data. We'll, we'll just look at the original power data before I zoom in. So you performed a ramp test. So you can see here, um, I had to do a bit of offsetting because it wasn't perfectly aligned and there's a couple dropouts. But if we just sort of go from, you know, without the dropout. Um, so he's got, as you can see here, we've got the XKD or below here, XKD, Elite Drevo and the P1. The P1 is only one sided. It's a dodgy pedal. It's quite old. Um, the Drevo is generally seen as a pretty reliable thing. Um, according to what I've seen on the internet and um, we can see the wattage here so um, obviously they're all measuring at different types so you expect the Drevo to be the lowest then the XKD then the P1 obviously at this point not 100% but you know plus or minus one and a half two percent let's just say two percent for easiest of calculations at 200 watts is about four watts difference so you'd expect you know if the XKD was correct that'd be 230 watts that could be you know 230 so that's more or less that's the within the four watts more or less because you think 230 plus or minus two percent so you know that's going to be four watts either way so you know more or less the same obviously there was a drop out here that's probably just environmental and things um my mate ted said it, it was sort of fine after that yeah he's been using time trialing stuff and it's it's all good um so yeah it looks looks pretty decent um in terms of numbers obviously they're not going to look perfectly smooth um but well obviously you know with more tests we could potentially show more the actual website um doesn't really say much from uh from xkd itself um we can look at the cadence here as well um but we'll just look at the um the time here um just see if the cadence is reading right 88 88 88 i mean no one cares if your cadence is one rpm out so that's um that's all promising. Speed is irrelevant. Distance is irrelevant. The only thing that's a bit worrying is this mean max power, which sometimes is a bit like it is quite significantly off the P1s. But then I think everything else seems to be all right. So if you look at the XKD, that's, you know, eight watts off, which 
isn't perfect, but I think there might just be a bit of synchronization errors here because I don't really believe if we look what was, because if we go for further duration, they seem to converge. It could just be a couple spikes here or there. Um, but 20 watt difference between the P1 and the XKD is an ideal, but I think between the uh, the Drivo and the XKD, six watts, um, you know, that's within plus or minus 2%, as I said. Obviously, you know, it says a little bit less, but, you know, it's good enough that, you know, if you're doing 305 watts and it says 312, or you're doing 312 watts, says 305, you know, that's not, that's not going to ruin you. Obviously, it'd be perfect if they completely agreed, and, but, you know, power meters aren't going to do that. Um, and then the rest of the data is slightly irrelevant. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you have and do enjoy this video. Um, I think I'll just go for my overall conclusion now. Overall conclusion is, should you buy this power meter? I think it's a, it's a pretty decent option. Um, if you can get it for $300, that's like £250. Pretty good. Obviously, you know, you need to buy a crank set with that. So you've got to buy a, like the actual cranks. Um, you can get them for rotor. And then you obviously also need the, the chain rings as well. So, you know, it's not 250 quid and you're sorted, but it's not, you know, far off that. Um, you know, you can get some rotor cranks, not too expensive, and chain rings again, secondhand, or, you know, get some dodgy ones from China. Um, for the single ring, they're not too bad. Um, you know, they, they do the job as well. So I think overall, pretty reliable. Would I buy this power meter if I was in the market for one? Probably. Got a lot of cross compatibility as well. Um, I'd say like the, the spider ones are quite good. Um, I sort of rate them quite highly. Um, they seem, you know, you can change from bikes relatively easily. And I think ultimately it seems like a pretty a pretty decent investment. Um, XKD themselves, I think, used to be a bit dodgy as a company, but I, th I reckon these days they're, they're not too bad at all. So, yeah, if you're in the market, I think definitely one to consider. It's not going to be up there with the SRMs, the info cranks, and other people like them, uh, for sure. But, you know, compared to, like, a stages left, right, I'd definitely buy this. I think it's, yeah, like, compared to the sort of lower-end ones, I'd say it sits probably slightly high because it doesn't have the Shimano issues. Um, obviously warranty is always going to be an issue. I, I didn't really see where the warranty was, but you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, I, I've had stages and never, never was not had an issue for like five years or whatever. So I think power meters in my opinion, don't seem to be too bad these days. Maybe back in the day they did. Um, so yeah, if you're in the market, definitely have a look. You can buy from the XKD website. I think you can also buy from AliExpress from different people as well. Um, but yeah, they've been in the market a bit longer XKD than some of the other people like McGee and other people who make random power meters. So yeah, definitely have a look, um, and cheers to the big lad Ted for um, giving me some power data, and I uh, hope you appreciate it. So anyway, cheers for watching, and see you in the next one.